Are you sure about that? It's May of 1952, and Iceland just increased its exclusive fishing grounds from 3 to 4 nautical miles, meaning that no one else is allowed to fish within that zone. Only Iceland. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, Connor, it's just some stinky fish, why would anyone even care? And to that I say, Have you ever tried fish and chips? And it just so happened that the British had, in fact, tried fish and chips and a very large sector of their economy was now dependent on it. See where the problem might pop up. Britain was so unhappy about this infringement on their fishing rights, in fact, that they just straight up banned Iceland from exporting fish to Britain. This was kind of a big deal, because Britain was the biggest buyer of Icelandic fish, and if the ban continued, the Icelandic economy would be devastated. Luckily for Iceland, the Cold War was going on at the time, and the Soviet Union started buying a bunch of fish in order to increase their influence on the strategic island. America saw this and got scared that they would lose their airbase in Keflavik, so they started buying a bunch of fish too, and even convinced Italy and Spain to join in. After a few years of this, Britain finally gave up and just let Iceland have the extra mile. Thus ended the first confrontation between the two nations, which in fact turned out to just be the prequel to the most dramatic and impactful conflict of the last millennia. The Cod Wars. Hey guys, this expanded fishing zone around Iceland has negatively affected business, but it's nothing that we can't get through together. Britain was now royally ticked. Get it? Cause they, uh... Cause they have a monarchy? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, this new fishing zone didn't really butter Britain's biscuits, so they told Iceland that they were gonna fish inside of it anyway. And when Iceland was like, Eki Gerafov, Britain told them to suck it and sent in warships to protect their fishing boats. Q, the First Cod War. This military deployment upset the people of Iceland, who quickly staged a protest outside of the British Embassy in Reykjavik. This protest upset the British ambassador, who responded by playing bagpipe music loud enough to drown out their complaints. True story. The Icelandic Coast Guard responded by deploying a grand total of six patrol boats to face off against the 48 British warships. The two sides clashed on and off, and shots were exchanged on multiple occasions. After a bit of this shenanigans, Iceland finally pulled its trump card and threatened to leave NATO and kick all their ships and planes out, and we all know how much good old Uncle Sam loves his military bases, so Britain was soon forced to withdraw its navy and accept Iceland's new fishing grounds. Okay, my dudes, it's been over 10 years since the last problem with Iceland, so I think it's safe to say that we can just move- Yet again, Iceland had increased its fishing zone and demanded that everyone else get out. Once the expansion went into effect though, a bunch of British ships were still hanging out and catching fish. Iceland couldn't stand this, so they sent in their coast guard armed with their new secret weapon. The, the Net Cutter. The net cutter is pretty much a big sharp hook that snags onto the line of a fishing net and cuts it off, thus rendering the fishing boat fishless. Here's how the first trial went down. Ship spotted, sir. Alright, this ought to be good. Greetings, this is the ICGV- uh, Um... How, how do you pronounce our name again? Oh, right. This is the Erga, uh, spelled with six J's and a Q. Um, please identify yourself. Um... No. Okay, well, in that case, I order you to follow us back to port. Wait, what's that coming through the radio? I swear, I literally did not make any of that up. The Aya was pretty grouchy at this point, so they deployed their net cutter and went in to disrupt the trawler. But when they got in close, the British crewmen started throwing garbage, coal, ropes, and a fire axe at the Icelandic vessel. In the ensuing garble that came through the radio, the Aya was able to identify the British ship as the Peter Scott. All that built up suspense and we get a stupid name like that. In response, the British Navy was deployed again and even managed to accidentally kill an Icelandic sailor, but it wasn't long before Iceland just threatened to withdraw from NATO again and Britain was forced to back down. The Second Cod War ended in another Icelandic victory. Okay. 
The Third Cod War was mostly just more of the same. Britain deployed like 30 frigates, Iceland deployed like 6 boats, and they messed around in the ocean for a while. This time though, both sides were feeling bold, and there were 52 reported incidents of ramming. You know, like a the ancient Greeks. Outdated as it was, a few ships were almost sunk and the Royal Navy had to spend millions of pounds on repairs. Quick, now it's time to play Guess How the War Ended. If you guess correctly, you'll get a pat on the back and a visit from the ghost of Fidel Castro. Alrighty, let's start! The war ended when... A. Iceland sent an army of trolls to attack London. B. Britain launched a nuclear strike on Reykjavik. C. All the cod killed themselves in a mass protest. Or D. Iceland just threatened to withdraw from NATO again. As much as I hate to say it, the correct answer is D, because DUH! Th there's not another war or anything, we're just all out of a job and have to sell our businesses and restart our lives in the south. <laughs> no biggie.